What's up everybody, it's Vivian, welcome back to my channel. And before you say anything, yes, I got a haircut and I know I look like Dora. But besides the point, I thought I would answer some of you guys most commonly asked questions about editing, After Effects, Video Star, computers, all that in one video. So keep on watching if you want your questions answered. So I think what I'm gonna do first is just divide my questions into five topics. So if you don't have questions on one, you can go to one part of the video and look at the other one. They will either be in the description or right here where I will tell you the timestamps of each category. So just scroll if you need to, or just watch right from the beginning. First topic that we are going to be discussing is After Effects. Now it definitely needs its own category because these questions get asked all the time and a lot of you guys wanna know because most of you guys use Video Star, All Light Motion, Funimate, all of these stuff that is on a mobile device. So I wanna first off by saying that After Effects is not, and I repeat, not on the App Store. You can't go on your phone no matter what mobile device it is and find it like, it, like in search it and it'll be there. It is only on the computer. I cannot stress this enough because so many people ask, where is it? I don't see it on the app store. It is only, it's a software. It can only be downloaded on a computer. Because it is downloadable on a computer, it costs money. And this is the question, the second most common question that I get asked is how much does it cost? After Effects costs about $20 monthly. And you go to their website, you can do a seven day free trial and then you have to pay by the monthly. They also have um, student discounts, like if it comes with your school and stuff like that for it be like a little bit less but in the long run it is $20 a month and there are other ways for you to get other products such as Photoshop and Adobe Premiere there's other Adobe products that you can get and if you get them all in one it's a little bit less a year and monthly so if you just want to get After Effects I say just go for it and pay the $20 a month but but there are ways where you can get After Effects for free now if Adobe is watching this I'm not one of those people I totally do that. A lot of people ask this question that I didn't really realize was actually an issue and like people really wanted to know was when should I get After Effects? When am I ready? After Effects, you can get it whenever. You don't have to have experience on Video Star or other apps to, you know, be able to get After Effects and be good at it. After Effects is confusing and it's its own animal on its own. Yes, it is helpful if you have video edited in the past, but you can start out using Video Star. I know a lot of people who haven't actually used a mobile device before and they just started out on Video Star and learned all the basics there. Video After effects is kind of it's it's different because it's on a computer so it's new and it does deal with more like the laptop version of things but after effects you can get it whenever you don't have to have experience to you know get the product but like i said it does help if you have had experience with video editing before because you do learn it a lot faster and in my post that i posted for you guys to ask questions a lot of you guys wanted to know transitions and the basics and like what it all means i have already made a youtube video on after effects basics on my channel that's only 12 minutes long and a lot of people have said that it's really easy to follow because i use voiceovers rather than text so if you do want to check that out i will put it right there on the eye but I can say in a quick tutorial that After Effects is not hard once you get to use it and you learn. And there are very basic tutorials out there like mine who describe it as easily as you can. I don't say try and work it on your own. Trying to figure it out on your own is very difficult. And I used After Effects I think I used it for the first time like three years ago, two years ago or something like that. And I was so confused at first, okay? So I was a video star editor for a long time and I moved to After Effects and I was so confused. And tutorials is what kept me going. It just takes practice. And if you watch my tutorial, hopefully it'll make it easier, but it just comes with a lot of practice and learning and doing it more and more. I also got this question a lot, people asking if After Effects is harder than Video Star or Video Star is harder than After Effects or which one is harder. That depends on the person. I do have to say that After Effects is a lot more complicated because the program itself does not give you tutorials. Video Star has walk you through videos that Video Star actually provides. After Effects, you open the computer, it makes says new project and you start. So you have to rely a lot on other people and outside sources that's not Adobe to help you. But when it comes down to it, Video Star has improved a lot to where they're very similar, like in graphing, which is something people are also confused on. And I've also made a tutorial on how to graph. Um, are very similar. App Video Star has been getting a lot of effects that After Effects has and already has with it, but Video Star um, is on a mobile device. So that is easier and it's less money if you're willing to pay. So it kind of depends on where you're ready to go and how much money you're willing to spend on that certain program. But in my eyes, I would say yes, because After Effects doesn't have tutorials and you really have to learn it on your own in practice. And Video Star is more like kid friendly and a lot of like younger users can use it. So yes, I would say After Effects is harder, but it really does just depend on the person. 
My final question that I got regarding After Effects, so I did have a lot more, but one of them that I really want to answer is what are plugins and which plugins should I get? Plugins are just part of the software that allows you to do different effects and different transitions. It's like on Video Star when you have to buy certain effects, like for 99 cents to like, you know, get this certain coloring or whatever. It's like a way for you to do certain transitions that After Effects doesn't just come with. And because I have the free version, I mean, what? Because I have that version of After Effects, there are ways where you can download these plugins for free. There are so many tutorials, and once again, it does depend on your computer. If you look up the certain plugins, like there are YouTube videos on which plugins you should get, and there are so many that I actually don't have, but one of them that I can, that I definitely know for sure on the top of my head is the Sapphire plugin. That allows you to do more glow effects and tile transitions, so I would say if you're gonna get any plugin, go for the Sapphire effect. That's the one I have at the top of my head, but I can put some text right here of some other plugins that I have. So this next topic is topic number two and it is kind of more like the technical what devices I use how I import and just like the behind the scenes of making an edit so for my computer I have a MacBook Air and the not so discreet Harry Potter stickers I also have a monitor that I connect to my computer just to make the screen bigger so it doesn't do anything make the edit better or anything but I just have it because I like having a big screen I don't like looking at screens for a long time which is ironic because I like editing but I don't like you know looking at it for long so I have a big screen that just makes it easier for my eyes to you know work and for those of you also wondering because I do have video star tutorials I use my iPhone 11 which I do to do video star if I ever do video star tutorials I used to be video star editor but I've moved to After Effects and I only make edits on After Effects and I only do video star tutorials to help you guys basically I just use my MacBook Air my keyboard and a mouse and my monitor so a question that also kind of files under the After Effects video star topic is what is a preset and how do I use them so presets are just kind of effects that you make already and you can reuse again so you make a transition you really like it and you save it so then if you want to use it in another edit it's accessible now they're obviously different on video star and after effects after effects you make the effect there is a setting where it says save animation pre preset and you save it and then you look it up and it'll be there video star you have to make the transition take a photo of it and then you scan that code later on but also if you do not have that certain plugin or that certain effect on video star or after effects it will not work it's not like if somebody makes an effect of a, something that you haven't bought yet it's gonna just work for you you have to actually buy it for it to actually work completely the same next question that I get asked a lot is how do I transfer how do I transfer videos to my computer or send my edits back to my phone? So I do have a video on this already out on how to save an After Effects edit to your um, phone, but I realized that computers have updated and that is not an option anymore. I'm still gonna keep that video up, but as of right now, that does not actually work and I had to learn how to transfer that. So for my computer and for transferring things from my phone to my computer, because I have an Apple computer, all I have to do is airdrop. Most of the time I actually make a base of my edit, so I just add the pictures to the music so it's just I don't have to import pictures and all of that and I just airdrop it to my to my computer and then I start editing from there but after I'm done the edit I do have to render it and save it to my phone but they don't have the option to make it into the certain format that I need so I actually have this app that I downloaded called handbrake that allows it to convert it to something that is able to be airdropped to my phone so that is another tutorial that I will have to put out there so sorry if that made no sense and you have no idea what rendering is that is an after effects term that you you can learn on my After Effects tutorial, but for the long story, I do have to get an app to actually transfer it to my phone now. And also, if you're not an Apple user, there are ways where you can actually send it to your phone, which I haven't really looked into because I've never had another computer that's not an Apple product. But a lot of times people can actually just email your edit straight to your camera roll. Yes, the quality is kind of sucky after you send it. But if you're desperate and you need somewhere to send it, you can always just email it. And I, I don't really know how PCs work exactly, but there are other there's probably other tutorials out there on how you can save it to your phone. So I would just go check those out if you can. Another question I got asked a lot too is how do I get my videos? Do I just screen record or do I put it in a certain in place I do both so if I'm like looking at videos on YouTube that are just easy accessible I will just screen record them and then put them in an edit and then make them slow and do all those effects or whatever on my computer it's also an app that I have that stores clips so I don't have to go searching for YouTube videos every time so it is called mega it's an app and you can also access it on your computer and it just allows you to you know keep all your videos in one place and so it's easy if I'm editing to just go to that app and just take the videos and place them in you know so it's not wasting all my storage in one like in all my downloads folder so I'm able to you know go to a separate app and actually transfer it to my computer but it's not required and there's other apps like this but I just found mega to be the easiest 
Next we have topic number three, audios and voiceovers. So people ask me, where do I get my music? How do you know what audio to use? So there are so many audio accounts that there are on Instagram. They just have editing audios that you can just screen record and save to your phone. I also like as I go and as I'm looking through edits, if there's an audio that I like, I just created an audios folder, you know, on my Instagram. So then if I like an audio, but I don't want to use it right now, I just have that video that I can save later. Not only can you screen record, I also have another app called Regram that just like takes it to my camera roll. So it's just easier. So I don't have to screen record or whatever. I don't know. I'm lazy like that. But I have this app that just lets me just save it if I just click it and put the Instagram link and save it and it'll automatically save to my camera roll. But if I don't want to use audios from Instagram, I can go to YouTube, but I also love SoundCloud. And if you don't know what SoundCloud is, it is just um, a platform where people can make covers and their own custom songs. And it's where a lot of the editing songs are. And if you've ever seen a caption that says SC in the caption and you'd be like, what the heck does that mean? And most of the time it means SoundCloud. Users that are mostly editors, well, at least the people I look at are editors. They make their own music. They could slow it down. They could reverb it. They could just make it as, as cool as they want. And so to save it, you just go to SoundCloud downloader and you just save it. And you can also airdrop that to your computer. I love SoundCloud because it's more custom for edits and it just sounds cooler. And most of the time it is just the quality is all around better and so I also got the question how do you make a voiceover over your edit you know how do you have people talking over the music I either just do it on iMovie and then just make my own custom audio and then make the bass and send it to my computer or I just go on After Effects and I just add the video in front and just make the volume a little bit lower where the music is at the beginning and then just make the regular edit. So the next topic that I have is topic number four, which is Video Star. And I think this needs its own category because I didn't realize how many people who watch my videos are actually Video Star users. So I thought that this topic would be helpful if you're just starting or if you don't think that After Effects is right for you. So a question that I got is how you get Video Star for free. I never got Video Star for free. I actually paid for it a while back. I've had Video Star since before they had graphs since before they had good effects like there was no graphing and so I had to do every single keyframe it, it was just I was definitely an OG with video star there's ways that you can probably get it for free I've not looked at those tutorials I'm sorry I cannot help you in that field but I know that there are ways you can get video star for free the question I got asked is what video star pack should you use and I so I, I don't edit on video star anymore so I'm a little rusty when it comes to effects but all I can say is that if you want your edits to look smooth and you want them to look like AE or you really just don't want them to look like video star at all please get something that has to do with blur I don't know how it really works anymore. I haven't really looked into it, but anything where they have rotation blur, just any blur that you can make transitions smooth, get it because it's totally worth it in the end because choppy transitions are just not it. And a lot of times people just don't want people to know they use video star because sadly on the internet, there is a big problem of people feeling like mobile users aren't treated the same or the After Effects users get like more praise or whatever. I hate that because I can tell why people would praise After Effects editors just because it has more effects, but there are so many talented video star editors out there. So please don't just follow them because they use After Effects or because their editing is smoother. Everyone's talented in their own way, no matter what program they use. Now this also kind of falls under the video star category, but it can also fa fall under any, sof any software that you use um, is how to download fonts. So, you know, you don't want to have the fonts that they give you because they're all based second times new roman you know all those basic fonts that you see and your teachers make you use at school but there are fun ways you can get funky fresh fonts on the internet i go to the website defont defont that's so fun i'll show you guys a clip right here on how i download fonts um video star is different because obviously it's on the mobile and then after effects is different so that's just a way where you can get more fun fonts so you don't have the most basic fonts ever topic number five is more a personal my editing experience so a lot of you guys actually wanted to know you know when i started editing how long what inspires me to edit which i found really interesting because i thought you guys were just more interested in the tutorials but i guess you guys want to know my experience so if that's all if you only came for tutorials then the rest of this video is just me you know explaining my whole editing journey for a little bit about the question how long does it take me to edit it kind of depends how inspired i am if i force myself to edit it, it'll take me forever because I won't care. My computer will probably be laggy and slow. It also does really depend on how fast my computer is working that day because there are times where After Effects likes to crash and just delete the edits. So I always save it as I go. But I would say on an average, it takes me at least like an hour to two hours to get like a good edit. It's gonna take a long time. And I know you guys, if you guys are editors, you understand that the process takes forever, especially if you want it to look good. And I find that this is a reoccurring trend that the edits that take me no time at all 
get so many views versus the edits that take me forever that don't get a lot of views. So I totally get if that is you because that's happened to everybody. But on it just kind of depends if I'm inspired or not or on the device. But most of the time I would say two hours is like the average, an hour and a half, just something like that. People also wanted to know is how do I balance editing and school? So I've been editing for a long time, as I said, and so I have kind of learned, you know, how it goes. I've been on Instagram forever. I've been in the same fandom. I have this kind of down. So it does, you know, get some getting used to. Um, I also did competitive gymnastics. I recently just retired from the sport and I was in the gym for four hours a day, five times a week. So I had school, editing, and and gymnastics. So it was really, really busy. But when it came down to it, eventually I learned that you kind of have to edit ahead. So to make your account like, I don't know, this is kind of hard to explain because I feel like this is going to have to be in a separate video just because it's a lot. But long story short, I would edit on the weekends, at night, anytime I was free, I would kind of force myself to do it, which you shouldn't edit because you you're forced to, you should edit because you're inspired, but that was just me. And so I would edit kind of on the weekends, like post, maybe make two edits and then have two edits to post in the week. So I do have to, you know, move it around. You know, when I didn't have gymnastics, I would edit. It's honestly like a job and a hobby that you just kind of have to make time for. Another question that I got is, is editing and having an account stressful? Short answer, yes. Long answer. Oh yes. Having an editing account, I did not realize when I started and it wasn't at first. It has definitely got more stressful the older I've gotten just because there's more hate. Um, there's more, you know, like there's better editors, there's com competition. It just got like, there got to a point where the editing like I don't know, platforms got really toxic. So that did add to the stress, but it's also stress like finding time. And right now with COVID, I'm not stressed because I got nowhere to be. So right now editing is kind of laid low, but when the school year starts and stuff, yes, editing can be stressful, especially like when you feel like you have a deadline or you're not inspired and you have to make an edit. That is just where I just give you guys that tip of just please just edit when you want to and don't force yourself because editing unfortunately does not last forever. So just don't, just don't let it stress you out. Put priorities first to editing because editing is supposed to be for fun. Finally, people wanted to know is how I gained followers fast. Also, I had no idea that this YouTube account would grow as fast as it did. So thank you guys so much. And I'm not really gonna answer this because I'm going to make a separate video on this that you guys need to stay tuned for. How I grew on my Instagram, how I grew on YouTube, because I grew very, very fast and I'm very fortunate to have that platform to base it off of. So I will make a video of that. So stay tuned for that next video. Hope this tutorial and these questions that you guys had were answered. And if not, please feel free to comment them down below. And if I was going too fast, you can always slow the video down. I'm sorry. I just wanted to make this video as quick as possible. And thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.